Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Uja Band podcast. Uh, today, we welcome two outstanding guests. We have singer-songwriter Robert Tepper and comic extraordinaire from Las Vegas, James Madden. How are you, gentlemen? What up? Uh, oh, a comedian. I love it. Yeah. Can't win them all, brother. Can't win them all. No, I like it. <laughs> we're, all, we're all comics, actually, Robert. We're, right. just two, we're just two comics who love music, so that's why we're doing uh, it. I get it. No, I got a lot of friends who are comics. Nice. Most yeah. depressed people I know. I'm kidding. Pretty much. Kidding. You're not wrong, sir. Let's just be real <laughs> blunt about that. You don't you don't have to add I'm kidding. It's it's some truthful shit. Yeah. Is it okay? All right. Sounds good. Hey Robert, you're from Bayonne originally? Bayonne, New Jersey, man. Two and a half miles of no you don't. You can't yes. you want to do this? No, you can't. Did you go to high school out in uh, Bayonne? Bayonne High School, man. We went to Bayonne High School on Kennedy Boulevard. Oh, my God. Well, actually, when I went, was it Kennedy? I thought it was on Avenue C. It's on Avenue A. Avenue A. There you go. I was close, though. Not bad for a guy with not all his faculties. That's pretty good. Let me, let me tell you something about Bayonne, okay? I just, I I produced the roast for Chuck Wepner. Wow. About five months ago. The Bayonne Bleeder. (laughs) Oh is yeah, he still, is he still alive? He's eighty years old. He's got all his faculties, and he's he's a, he's a great human being. And I said I to bet. him bluntly, I said, "Listen, uh, I love you. I love you dearly, but I can't wait for you to die so I could be the most famous person from Bayonne." <laughs> and then I find out that you're from Bayonne, and now you just pissed me off. <laughs> I apologize, man. Don't worry, I'm pretty close myself. I'm going to be oh, the art tomorrow. Oh, <laughs> you look great. <clears throat> well, happy That's birthday, man. Thank you, thank you. I got a, I got a question for you, Robert. Yeah. Um, you wrote one of my all-time favorite songs. You wrote Into the Night with Benny Mardonis, The Voice. Love this guy. How did that come about, and what is that song about? Okay, uh, let's see. That song came about in some kind of drug-crazed evening up in New York City. I was living on 94th. Benny was on 154th. We were... You know, we were the toxic brothers. We were up there taking and eating anything we possibly can and getting ready for his getting ready for his polygram record. And we started writing this song man, into the night. And uh, I met Benny in, in New York City and we got together. We started writing and he was he had done Thank God for Girls, which was uh, and then he just signed to polygram. And this was his new record. And he brought me in, man. I don't know. I don't even know why. I was nobody. And we met some, we met at this place. And he said, well, let's get together and write. And I said, okay. I mean, I was as green as the day is long. But we got together and started writing. And, you know, I, you know, that song, uh, yeah, that stuck. That one stuck a couple of times. Was that one of the first songs you ever wrote? No. No, I had a hit with Paul Anker. Anybody remember Paul Anker or are sure. you all too young? So it came twice last year. You saw, okay. So Paul Anker was like, he wrote the Tonight Show theme. Paul Anker was like this, so my this way. guy. Yeah, it was, it was kind of my way, your way, kind of little mafioso kind of, you know, dude. <laughs> and, and he was like, he had the Napoleon thing going. He was really short. And like, that was the first hit. I wrote it with this girl, Madeline Sunshine, who was a, who's still a dear friend of mine. And uh, we, he, he recorded that song. I was working for Cam America. That was one of my first jobs working for a publisher. And he picked up on it. And uh, yeah, that was a top 20 hit for me. First, first time I ever got a taste of anything. Can you imagine if somebody put out Into the Night right now? They the do, first, man. It's, and the it's, first oh, line. It's a, hard song to, <laughs> it's a hard song to cover. Because exactly. no one could sing it the way Benny did. This guy had pipes of fucking gold. Oh my God. Benny is the voice. They call him, they don't call him the voice for no reason. That's you know? right. You know, and uh it's so funny, man. You with the hat backwards. What's your first name? Jeff. Jeff. So I got a friend, Mike Bishop. You he's your doppelganger, okay? He's like <laughs> he, he's a guitar player. He's in New York City, works sound on MSNBC. You you know, my Jersey accent just went from about 15 to about 85 listening to you, okay? It's going to be thick. Is he as good looking as me? Nah, man, you're an ugly fuck. Are you kidding me? No. Nah, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Now, you just made Sean Morton's day, by the way. Uh, <laughs> nothing can right. go wrong today, Robert. Nothing. I am so glad I agreed to be on this. 
this is <laughs> why not? Ever. No, come on, hit me with some comedy. I'm loving it. I love nobody. You don't have a better audience than me. I love comedy. All right, well, then, guys, what did you think of Rocky's speech at at the end of Rocky Four? What? Which one? Remind me. Which one? You can't I do can it, change. Rocky. That one. If you, you can, can change, change, then I can change. Then we all can change. You know something? Look, I was a lucky motherfucker, man. I got to be part of a franchise, right? I mean, it's like being part of the Bayonne Library. Okay, New York City Library, a little better. And, you know, I got my card. He loved that song. He put me in the movie. I don't know every line. I don't know every verse. All I know is that people hooked into that movie like it was pure liquid heroin, okay? It's a and, great uh, movie. Yeah, oh, it, yeah. Is a great, it is a great movie. And so many movies derive from it still. You know, and especially people are just so down, down with it. And it's great. Yeah, but I... You know, I don't know every word of dialogue. I'm not that guy. I got a life. <laughs> so. uh, I'm that guy. <laughs> That's good. That's I'm good. that guy. There's got to be those guys. Guys like that have these shows. I love it. Oh, yeah. Lord knows we don't have comedy to do, so might as well watch Rocky Four 13 times. I hear you. I hear you. In the quarantine, Rocky Four watchers. I like it. Come with me. Robin, but, how did you have well, that hell? speech is so how? wonderfully ridiculous. What's that? Oh, yeah. The speech is so wonderfully ridiculous that he says. It's a Let's bunch of ahead. people quote, stuck quote in it. a communist quote. dictatorship. If you change, you can change. Oh, motherfucker, we're just people at a boxing match. We can <laughs> change the government right now. Um, I don't know if you've been reading the news, but thanks. One day, maybe. <laughs> when the Scorpions put out that song, we'll change. I'm <laughs> sure whatever they were thinking, I was thinking the other way. Okay? That's my, <laughs> my, kind, of, my kind of thing. You got to remember, that was also before the Berlin Wall came down. And so you still that's were right. The, oh my god, that's the cold war. That's an excellent point. That is an excellent point. That people that that was the symbol of yeah, I mean, Russia still was in such dominance back then and had so many satellite countries before it was about to disintegrate and turn into I, the mafioso place it is today, you know. Robert, how the heck did you wind up in Iron Butterfly? So here's what happened, right? Um, I am. Um, you know, when you come from Jersey, right? You know, I played in mafia places. Everything's always a little shady. You know what I mean? Everything's always a little scammy. Everything, you know, after you shake somebody's hands from the East Coast, you count your fingers. You know what I mean? It's always that kind of thing. <laughs> you know? I'm from Staten Island. Sean is from Bayonne. We know exactly what you're Same talking thing. About. First place I ever drank was in Staten Island, okay? I could barely crawl over the bridge, but I lived in Bayonne. And I played in clubs in Staten Island. So, okay, so just, uh, well, I, I spaced, I, I spaced. So I'm, I'm old tomorrow. So what was the question? What did you want to know? How the heck did you wind up an I Am Butterfly? I Am Butterfly, okay. I, am butterfly. I, I blocked that out. So there was this guy, this guy, um, he's always a guy, right? I get a call, I'm in upstate New York. Pretty much feel like my career is like, you know, uh, flannel had come in. Nobody's really listening to AOR rock anymore, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm upstate, I'm on George Sickle Road in Woodstock, New York, okay? You can hit a golf ball in any direction. And I get a call from this guy, this, uh, what was Steve's last name? I'll think of it. And this guy goes, hey, you know, I'm putting together, I don't know if you guys remember this, you're probably too young, I know you probably are. But at some point in like the, 90s they started putting together bands with different lead singers you know there was like a uh, bad company you know it wasn't with paul rogers they had you know I, I think i saw them at the hard rock or something but they were putting stuff together so this was some guy's dream he had some money and he said i want to put iron butterfly back together and i get a call and they said you know we want you to come in and and sing and da 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 so i I get flown out uh, to L.A. And, you know, the band's OK. But little did I know this guy had no legal right to the name Iron Butterfly. OK, <laughs> nothing. All right. But, you know, it's like all of a sudden we're practicing and this guy's coming in with like tashikis on and, and little things covering their mouth. This guy's raising money, you know, and, you know, so far he's paying the bills and you know, we're rehearsing, we're in a pretty nice studio and, you know, uh, uh, John Cafferty's in the, in the studio down the hall and the whole thing turns to 
absolute crap when, when the bottom falls out. The guy, I don't know where he is, okay? The FBI is looking for him. Wow. And this turns out to be my AOR, my AOR record. They put my name on it, and we put it out in Europe. You know, and uh, it had no rest with a wounded heart. It had, uh, you know, um, always knocking on the wrong door. There's some really good students. Uh, you know, I met Derek Hilland, who played with with uh, uh, with uh, Rick Springfield, um, Candy Suarez, a great drummer. Uh, you know, two of those guys are dead. One, two of them, one drank himself to death. The other might have OD'd. You know, it was it was a rock and roll experience. It was I was up for it. I don't I need to laugh. Up. Look, you know. I have a that's great how... Iron Butterfly story. Let me hear. Bet you never thought you'd hear those words coming out of my mouth. No, right? no, no, no. <laughs> Iron Butterfly was. So there is a strip club uh, here in New Jersey called Hot 22, okay. which, is on, which is on Route 22. So whenever you have a bachelor party, you can you go, go there. there. Now right. it's a juice bar, so the girls are all nude. And what they do Fantastic. is when you have the bachelor, they have a thing called the treatment. So the What's treatment, the treatment? The yeah. treatment is they give you three songs and they bring the bachelor on stage. The girls take his belt off. They whip him with it. They beat the right, shit out right. of him, all this stuff. So Pants I'm in charge the- of picking the songs. And my friend Joe says to me, because it was his bachelor party, uh, I have one song request. And I said, what's that? He goes, Inagata De Vida. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, why? I go, why? He goes, it's 13 minutes long. I want to get my fucking money's worth. <laughs> We very did. funny very we clever. did Ross, that did you was wind up song? touring what's that did you wind up touring with iron butterfly did... you know i never actually did the tour um the thing was like i said you know it it was it was truly a house of cards you know ah. um the guy never really had clearance for anything so some of the the original singer from iron butterfly and we and we had some you know we we I brought in some some good people, you know. Um, we had uh, a Timmy Landers who played on No Easy Way Out, right? He came in and produced. I mean, we spent some money on that record, but this guy never paid his bills, man. Hmm. And we never got, we never made it out of. Uh, I thought we made a pretty decent record, you know, but we never really got it off the ground as far as touring. Never happened, you know. Here's my question: If you would have toured with them for Inagata Davida. Who would have played the drill solo? Like, who just, uh, like, probably, do you put down your instrument and grab a fucking drill? Like, that's what right. And you do the, we actually did a version of Inagata de Vida, and I have no idea where it is, but there's my voice is on it somewhere. Oh, please. You got to find that. I have no idea. You know what? You know, there's certain things, you know, I'm, I'm not going to go take a Picasso painting and go and make a copy of, uh, you know, <laughs> some, some very famous painting is. I'm not going to do it. If you so ever want to do that, if you ever want to do that song on Zoom, though, I would love to play the drum, the, the uh, drill song. Oh, the drum song. Of mine. I'm wow. around, dog. I'm around. <laughs> hey, I got the I got the guitar behind me. We can start it right now. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, that's nice. What do you got back there? I mean, you got a lot of shit back. There. I got a, I got a couple. I got a, a couple Washburns. I got an ESP. I got an Ovation. Nice. Acoustic. The ESP. How do you like the ESP? I like those. I love it. The only <laughs> problem with those, you know who you know who owns that company? No. The guy who runs Musicians Institute. It's like the Chinese mafia and the Japanese mafia. It's not, not a, a mafia references in this episode. Yeah, so far, Robert. You know what? I grew up in New Jersey, oh, man. I played in Bayonne, the clubs for years. Bay of Staten Island. Right? <laughs> and Bay Ridge. Don't slip. Don't slip. Bay, that out. Right. I'm a resident of Bay Ridge. It's all mobbed up, dog. That's right. We're all mobbed up. I'm I a made guy. I'm not a made guy. Thank no. God. Robert, now you all, Stallone must have really taken a liking to you because. Doesn't he also put another one of your songs on the uh, on the Great Cobra soundtrack? Yes, he did. So, so here's what happened. So, we have the MTV Weekend when when uh, Rocky IV comes out. I mean, uh, I'm with my second wife, my Swedish wife. You know, uh, we're at the Westwood Marquee. You know, it's it's like, you know, Grace Jones is there and Dolph Lundgren, and you know, <laughs> it's it's. It's a big deal, you know. We're in we're in Westwood, LA, so that did really well. So the next movie, he goes, "I want to do it again, man. I want to do it again." And you could tell there wasn't a great amount of fanfare fair around Cobra. I remember, I I go with my wife and we go to Times Square, and I go see it, 
And I come out and I said, is it my imagination or that just wasn't very good, you know? <laughs> and, and uh, you're the, you know. And, you're, and who, you're the disease. I'm the cure. <laughs> exactly. But that's it. You know what I mean? It's, it's Stallone. So the disease starts to get into people's bones and people who <laughs> love him, right? People who love him just go crazy for him. It becomes like a cult, a cult classic, right? Exactly. And, and I go to, what was I doing? I was in Sheffield, England, I think, or was, was I did a, a big show there, like not maybe five years ago. And I didn't play Angel of the City. And people were fucking pissed, man. They were like angry, you know, because hmm. I, I, I'm an old man. I had no idea. I mean, it's since Twitter and all that stuff. Now I see people really appreciate that song, but I had no idea that they loved it. You know, they really liked it. So, you know, I include it every time now. So, but that's, I, I had a weird feeling when I came out of Cobra. I was like, I don't know. I mean, did that work? You know, and nobody knew who Bridget Nielsen is. This is like you. You know, you grab it, grab it. Are you married? You married? Yes, I'm married. Okay, you're married. So it's like you trying to impress your wife. I'm going to put you in a movie, right? He actually did it, you know? Right. And, she, you know, I met her for the first time. Wow, did she turn out to be a weirdo, huh? Wow. Yeah, yeah. So crazy. So yeah. I met her the first time at the Rocky Four. At the Rocky Four, we had dinner after with her, Tony Curtis, me, Rob Lowe, me. From Bayonne, New Jersey, young little guy, green as fucking can be. Me, I'm at the table with all these heavy hitters. I'm like, Ugh. and now I'm in Cobra, you know? And, but even with my limited intelligence, being from Bayonne, you can only be so smart, you know? Even with my limited yeah, intelligence, I knew that was not the movie that Rocky IV was, you know? But it, great scene, though. but it lived, it lived. No, and it had, it had a pretty good soundtrack. I mean, Angel of the City. But also, do you remember the song, Feel the Heat? Feel the Heat, who was that by? I think it was Jean Beauvau. Oh, something? John Beauvau, of course, that was a big hit for him. And he, and he was in the plasmatics, am I right about that? John, John Beauvau is still, because I was supposed to do, because of the new record I did, uh, and I'm not trying to switch the conversation because I'm fine. What do you got to do? I got nothing to do. We can talk all afternoon. We're, we're here to talk, baby. <laughs> we're here to talk. And as you can tell, I'm very shy. But John is out there, man. John is, John was in the middle of a big American tour now. And, uh, you know, um, so you still we, have we met a couple of times. Yeah, he's he's great. He is really good. Yeah, I, I remember that because at the time I was working for the record label. And I remember what record label? What? What I worked. Really? I worked. I worked A uh, and R for uh, CBS Records. I worked on the eleventh. Uh, who was your floor. boss? Was Stessel, Larry Stessel your boss? Uh, my boss was Pete Lapaki. I worked on I, the same floor as uh, Walter Yetnikoff. Walter, yeah. Walter Yetnikoff. And I was a, very, very a tight fine with human secretary. being. What's that? I was very, very tight with his secretary. Very cool. I bet you were. I'd like to okay. go on record and say that I was not born and raised in Bayonne, New Jersey. <laughs> the good, that I only and moved here when I was God 17. Every day that you were. That's good. I'm a Union City boy. Thank you. Union City? There's only one up. place worse. I know. There's only one place worse. It's Union City. That's hilarious. Oh, my God. I played in Union City when I'm 16 years old, okay? I'm playing in Union City. And literally, okay, there's a spot. Well, you've been there, right? There's like the center of town. It's all clubs, okay? Yeah. And I'm playing in this bar, okay? And there's so many stories. You remember Frankie DePaulo? Does the Bayonne guy remember Frankie DePaulo? No. Frankie DePaulo was fighting for the middleweight championship of the world, okay? His manager owned this place we were playing in. And I'm flirting with this go-go dancer, like, for weeks and months, we're playing there. And guess who Frankie DePaulo's girlfriend is? Oh, buddy. Go-go dancer. Yeah. What am I, out of my fucking mind? What am I, nuts? <laughs> so we're, the, we're at this club. I think it was the, I want to say it was the Choo Choo Club, but that sounds too easy. There's another club. Red Fox is there, right, doing comedy. Then there's another club, Dr. Hook is playing there, okay? This is in Jersey, man. This is like, I mean, it was all clubs. 
you know, you did five sets, you know, it was, it was crazy. It was crazy. It was great. That was a hop. That was a hopping area in like the sixties. It 70s, was, man. It really was because you, if you wanted to play, you played down the Jersey shore, you know what I mean? Or you played in union city, you played in New York at the clubs, but New York was tough for us. Jersey kids. We, you know, probably weren't old enough, you know, you had to be 21 to drink and, you know, Anyway, you, I digress. I'm sorry. I got a lot of memories. I'm old. How old were you when you put out your first record? First record, I was, I lied. I was probably 33 or 34. I told everybody, I had a big interview with People Magazine. I'm living in New York City on 94th Street with my family. <clears throat> told the girl from People Magazine. It was either us or people. I'm down the village. I told her we, we met at a bar in Midtown. And I told her I have no kids. I'm not married. Nothing, right? I'm down in Soho with my kid. I walk into the big <laughs> store. Remember the big store? They got oversized everything. And there she is. Goes. I thought you didn't have any kids. I thought you weren't married. I go. Oh fuck you. You know, kids. It was like you know. So I was like 33, 34. I was probably telling everybody I had a baby face. 25, 26. You know. Okay. That's pretty cool. Interesting. Okay. Rob, who do you listen to now? Um, I listen to a lot of stuff. Okay. Um, first of all, I have five boys, right? Three mm. grandchildren. So a lot of music comes across here, you know? Um, let's see. You don't want to put it on a spot like that. It's like, I, you know, I listen to a lot of producers too. people, you know, like, you know, Greg Kirsten makes some great albums. I like Beck, Beck Colors, you know, Beck's album Colors. Oh yeah. That's amazing. You know, I really think that's like a brilliant record. Um, what else am I listening to? Um, oh God, I mean, I listen to so many things because I mix, so I reference a lot of music. You know what I mean? Uh, things that are out today, you know, um, you know, uh, Fallout Boy. I listen to uh, uh, Dave Grohl. I listen to, you know, I want to hear like like the modern, you know, modern sound. And even those guys are getting old, you know. But you know. Uh, the last bit, you know what band I really like, and I'm going to space on their name right now. They're like, this guy's voice is so good. And guess what? He's from Jersey. Um, uh, I will think of it in a second. It's kind of folky. It's almost, it's almost a little like um, R.E.M.E., you know? Um, hmm. I'll think of it. Can't think of it right now. But, Gaslight you know, Anthem? So, what is it? The Gaslight Anthem? Not Gaslight Anthem. Uh, let That's one of my, my favorites. Son. Hold on one second. I'm gonna text. I'll text my son. He'll tell me. Okay. Uh, nah, fuck it. Let's see. So I, my Chemical Romance. I hope that's the Jersey band you Ke love. Chem oh, chemical Romance is a great band. Great. I, you know, I really like the kill. I really like the Killers. I think there's a what ton of '80s in the Killers. Oh, absolutely. You my know? old bass player. Swear you know? to God, my old okay. bass player is their bass player. They're from Vegas, right? They're from yeah, Vegas. Mark right? was in my band back in the day. I thought. I think he. Uh, uh, um, what's what's the song? The man, that album. What's the other one on there? There's there's another song on there that's, that's really called so great. Dope. The man. I used to come out to it when I did warm up. Oh, okay. So you like a wrestler. I felt like right. WrestleMania three. That's right. They're really good. They're really good. Yeah. Hey, James, uh, you just mentioned un undercover. It was undercover. <laughs> 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 Fucking great record. You know, you what mentioned else? you mentioned Beck before. I was always like a Beck fan of like the hits. And then yes. the Colors album came out and I went down to Philadelphia to see them. And, I, and I'm, I'm telling you, I'd never seen them before. And honestly, I very rarely get blown away when I see an artist for the first time. Right. I got every record after I saw that concert. No, he he's amazing. And he did a, a crazy version of Raspberry Beret by Prince. Oh, wow. What what a great song, right? right. What a fantastic song. He was it was one of the best concerts I ever went to. And it was yeah. one of those like yeah. minute ten dollar concert tickets and blew me away. Isn't that something? I, I mean, it's that. like there's so much good music out there. What else what else have I been listening to? Um have you been going back listening to some of the classics? You know, I'm always listening to because again, the concept of the eighties record that I kind of you know, the, that we did my, uh, you know, better than the rest. We were influenced by what we loved, so yeah, we were we were we were back listening to everything. Oh my God, we listened to Van Halen. We were listening to, you know, uh, 
um, Billy Squire, you know, I was listening to, uh, I mean, when you, when you think about that time period, right? Those engineers were motherfuckers, man. Guys who made the Billy Idol records and the guys who made, you know, um, uh, Mutt Lang and Ted Mutt Lang. Lang. Mutt Lang's Lang. one of my yeah. all time heroes. Yeah. Man, one of my all time heroes. And I dare you to go on the internet and find shit about him. It's almost impossible, right? There's not much on him. I mean, Mike Shipley does most of his engineering, but it must be some experience making a record with that guy. You know, um, like the Brian Adams album. I love that Brian Adams album that he produced. You know, you know, uh, I know you're just baby. Don't you know there will never be another tonight? That's there a great song. Never be another. Oh, such great songs on that record. Love it. A little bit of that raspy uh, Ryan. Oh, are you kidding? Uh, yeah. I got the view it right in my throat right now, especially now, man. I'm like, phew, we're bunkered down here. But let's not talk about it. It's so depressing. It so is. fucked up. You know, can I just say that I love Mutt Lang because um, I hate to use the term guilty pleasure, but when I get Go. asked that, I love 80s Def Leppard. I think they the- uh, How can you not love Def Leppard? How could you not love Def Leppard? But I love there the fact no that- that's not a guilty pleasure. I I got to tell you, there are there are uh, facets of Def Leppard on my record. There are facets of uh, Duran Duran. There's facets of some of the synth music that was out in the '80s. There was so much great stuff. Oh, yeah. We came up at a blessed time, man. Well, I did. I don't know. You guys, are I love them. Same with you. First video yeah. I ever saw was Photograph. I still Food. listen to it. Emotional. And I love yeah. the fact that the producer's name is Mutt and he doesn't drink. A dude right. named Mutt who doesn't drink, that's <laughs> hey, fucking Oh, my scary. God. That's scarier than anyone you met in Bayonne. That's all I'm saying, yeah. though. That's all Absolutely. I'm saying. No, Mutt is, Mutt is like, I can't wait. Someone's going to do a documentary on that dude if they're able to, okay? Because, look, I am always looking at what producers do, right? Because, I, you know, I produced my record with me and Pablo produced it, you know? And it's like, Mutt is like the genius of, he writes, right? He sings. A lot of those backgrounds are him, right? I mean, wow. you know, he's awesome, man. He makes and he's amazing. got a hot wife on top And you know, what, what's the best, what's, what's the best, one of the best records he ever did? Okay. I, it's a trick question, but. Oh, Back in remember, Black. Which one? I think Back in Black. Man. He did Back no, in Black. I'd say Shania right. Twain's, That's I'd say Shania Twain's answer. record. How about You Might Think by the Cars? Oh, oh, that's great. God. Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize what that. What an amazing record, right? Right. Anyway, yeah, a little so later, I listened, a little later I listened on to everything. I listened to everything. And you know. I remember, too, when he did Shania's record, I mean, The Woman in Me is probably one of the biggest records of all time. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and those are great records. Those I yeah. listened to him. Yeah, anything he has anything to do with. And plus, you know who his guitar player is on most of that stuff was Dan Huff, who was uh -huh. on No Easy Way Out. And, you know, oh, was wow. my when he came to town, I think I was like one of the first records he played on. Yeah, you know? that's great. Are it's you been, tired of the old man stories yet? I got a million. Not at all. No, not at all. <laughs> no, it's been so Let me know. since No Easy Way Out, and it never gets old. Like I think that's the better Rocky song than Eye of the Tiger. I agree. Okay, thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Absolutely. What, what did what, you think? What did you think of the cover version that came out a few years ago by Bullet from My Valentine? I I thought I thought look. You know, I mean, you're going to put this out and stuff like that. I, it's great. It's all great for me. You know, who the fuck am, me? Who am I? You know, I just wrote it and sang it. OK, but they didn't change it that much. You no, know they I mean? really didn't. It's like for me, I did a version. I don't know if I have a friend, Brad Brooks, who's a really great singer from San Francisco. And there's a whole alternative scene up there. So he asked me to do a radio show with him up there, I don't know, a number of years ago, maybe five, six years ago. And we did a version with a string quartet and his band. And that's more different than any version I've ever heard. You know what I mean? It's like, why cover a song? You know, nobody's, I mean, no one's going to do it better than the original. You know what I mean? Because it just kind of happens, you know? Yeah. And it moved, moves on. It's not a braggy thing. It's just, it, it got created. It became what it was. It becomes the standard. If you're going to do it, at least do it, you know, and I didn't feel it was that different, although I was very happy they did it, you know. Yeah, it, it is. It is pretty much uh, formulaic. Like they really didn't change anything to it. But uh, I, when I saw that, it blew me away because they're, yeah, they're yeah. one of those bands, too, that 
Um, they're not super gigantic, but they're very big in the metal community. Absolutely. And a lot of people, I guess, found like a lot of younger kids found that song through them. Uh, yes, absolutely. And that's all great for me. My 18 year old, you know, smoking better pot than he would be, you know, <laughs> 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 smoking. So oh, I'm sorry. I had that one. I got to use that one. I love that. That's one. awesome. Now, we also, uh, we have a, another guest with us today. Also, we have James Matty. He's a comic from, from uh, Vegas, also in uh, Brooklyn. And his band, Robert, you familiar with Soundgarden? Fuck yeah. Are you kidding? That drummer? That drummer is amazing. Matt Cameron. Are you kidding? And, and uh, sound, you know, Soundgarden was like, you know, you, I mean... I just thought that whole thing was was awesome because you got to remember I have kids who you know one of them's been been with me for the whole quarantine I could tell you the whole story behind that but I won't I'll spare you right now and so you know I have a a, a 43 year old 41 year old 32 year old 20 year old and 10 year old so my forty, my forty-three year old. I mean, I knew about Pearl Jam. You know, they were in a band called The Natural History. I mean, they're. I got a whole house full of musicians here. It's been crazy, hmm. you know. And Matt Cameron wound up playing drums for Soundgarden from Soundgarden oh Pearl Jam too, right? Yeah. What what an amazing drummers they had, right? Was, was he Pearl Jam and then into uh, Soundgarden or vice versa? I think it was Temple of the Dog. Pearl Jam first. Well, no, he was with Soundgarden, and then they did Temple of the Dog, and then Pearl Jam. People forget he's been in the band like two decades. They went through drummers like Spinal Tap, and then finally, oh my gosh, like, that's right. So Matt, get in here. Soundgarden was on a long hiatus; they'd broken up, and you know when Soundgarden got back together, Matt was still in both bands. And the last time I saw Soundgarden, he wasn't drumming because he was with Pearl Jam. Now the constant, wow. the yeah, Matt changed the constants in. Um... Soundgarden were always Chris Cornell and the uh, guitarist Kim Thale. Exactly. Kim Thale, mm -hmm. yeah. Right. I mean, what a sad, what a sad story, man. Yeah. Heartbreaking. You know, it's just, it's, it's so, it's so crazy to me. You know, it's like, you, you know, like I, I didn't have like the, the rocket, rocket career. You know, I mean, I, I did okay. People who know me know me, but it's like you look at these people like Prince and like Soundgarden and Prince like that. It's like. It eats people up and spits them the fuck out. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just like, it's really sad when you when you see shit like that. It's it's, uh, you know. And Tom Petty, you know, fuck. I was we were watching because we were watching Running Down a Dream last night. You know, it's like, what a great career this guy had. You know, and he fucking dies. He pretty much OD'd. You know, yeah. I mean, you know, so I was fucked out in, up, man. I was out in L.A. when um, right when Cornell died. Right. And I was uh, at the cemetery when they did the memorial for him. Oh, really? And it was wow. one of the most it was one of the most surreal experiences. You just had hundreds of fans. There were some musicians down there just all sitting around playing music. Everybody's crying. Right. They're just toasting him, drinking beers, playing guitars, doing his songs. One of the most amazing things that I ever saw. Yeah, really. You was. know, because you have to, to to me. Don't you? I don't know how you guys feel, but the Chris Cornell voice. You know, more. I love Eddie Vedder. You know, I really do. But the Chris Cornell voice was kind of more of like coming from the 80s into what they were doing. Sure. You know what I mean? He had he had the muscle to sing anything he wanted to, you know. One he of the purest, that, yeah, one of the purest voices, I mean, ever in rock. Absolutely. Rock, Absolutely. Would, I loved you, his voice. Would you put him up there when you say a guy who I think could sing anything? Would you put him up there with uh, Paul Rogers? No, man, you can't fucking do that. You can't do that. The Pauls, Paul Carrick, Paul Rogers, Paul, Paul Young, all, those, all the Pauls. You can't touch the Pauls, man. Anyone because, Paul? Uh, because, uh, yeah, uh, 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 Peter, Paul, and Mary, kidding. But, <clears throat> you know, Paul Stanley. those guys, nobody no, no, was no, doing that. No, not Paul Stanley. You know, Paul, not Paul Stanley. Not Paul, Have it on Paul fire, Stanley. bro. Have it on fire. Paul Stanley, I got my Paul Stanley story. You tell me when you want to hear it. Paul, we want to hear it now. Right now, you want Robert. To hear it now? Stanley? Right now. Right. I never thought Paul Stanley was a great singer at all. Okay? Well. Never. Okay? But the band concept. So let's start at the very, very beginning. I was never a huge Kiss fan. Excuse me. I'm at Trax on 79th Street between Columbus Avenue and Amsterdam. 
And this is a place where I would get wasted and go to a lot. And I saw a ton of people there from, uh, you know, uh, uh, from Carly Simon to Desmond Child and Rouge to Carl, uh, 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 who else? Oh, John Bellucci and, Lit and, and Gilda Radner and George Harrison was there. And you would just go down there and, and people were there. OK, you just would go. And if you lived in New York, it was like, All right, I'm going down to tracks. Right. So one night I'm in there and I hear this band and they don't have any makeup on or anything. And they're playing. They sound like a Bad Stones cover band. OK, like a Bad Stones cover band. And I go outside to have a cigarette and I'm standing in front. And all of a sudden, this guy, Bill LaCoin, comes outside and starts. So he feels so what, you know, I said, what do you think? He goes, well, I'm the manager. He, I go, really? I said, I don't hear it, man. I really don't. I don't hear it. So that was my original. Is this hit before the first album? No, this is before the first record. This, there's no album yet. Okay. So then years go by. They're doing great, and I'm hanging at a place called Tracks in 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 New York, right uptown on the on the west side. And I see Paul every now and then, you know, but Paul's not a big hanger out of man. He's like a really like kind of a nice guy, you know, and I was not a nice guy. I was like kind of a drug addict. So, you know, and we're hanging out and all of a sudden uh, his people are talking to my people. I miss I we we go and have a dinner. I had no easy way out. Do you want to write with Paul? I was like. What am I, you know, I'm, I'm not thinking clearly. Like, if I was the same person, I should have said, yes, I want to write his whole next album. But I didn't, okay? We had dinner, we go out. And so we're, we're kind of friendly. And so MTV Awards come up. We go to the MTV Awards. And I had made a plan with Paul, Paul that I was going to go over to his place on the west, on the east side. And we were going to take a limo over to the Hard Rock Cafe. I mean, does this not sound like 80s fucking rock star shit, right? So I'm like, I come out of the place where the award show is. It was on 14th Street. I think it's, I forget what's, 14th Street, Manhattan. Come on, what is it? Academy? Palladium. Palladium. So come out, come out. It's fucking pouring out, okay? My wife at the time has on a purple wig. I'm like... I walk up to Park Avenue, a car sees me, he goes, Robert Tepp? I go, yeah, he, I go, take me and blah, blah, blah. I give him Paul Stanley's address, right? He rides us all the way up, drops me off. We're up at Paul's, I'm drinking champagne. I am fucked up, okay? I, we get into the limo, we head over to the Hard Rock. We open the door, fucking, it's like, okay? And all of a sudden, I hear the guy who gave me the ride uptown go, hey, Robert, can you get me in? I say, of course I can get you in. The kid breaks the line. They try to stop him. I start throwing a punch at the, at the security. Cameras are going That's off. jersey in you. Paul Stanley runs like the bitch he is. He, like, didn't want to have anything to do with me. He was like, who is this stupid ass? I'm kidding. He's not a bitch. I don't know him that well. But we were hanging out a little bit, you know? So that's my story. I'm in the front. I'm on the post the next day. Rocky singer swings and fucking. So that's my Paul Stanley. That was it. He never talked to me. And, we got, oh, and that was a party. That was a party up at the uh, Hard Rock on 57th. Right on 57th Street. And where was the party? Upstairs? The party was right. Well, it was upstairs. Uh, Paul Schaefer's band was in there. You know, they were playing. I think they pretty much rented out the whole joint for them for the night. And I got a, I got the guy in eventually, you know. I, I got him in. In in the I don't know if you remember, but in the mid '80s, uh, Jerry Garcia did a run of shows over at the Lumfontein Theater, Ooh, and I don't worked. Remember. Yeah, I worked those shows, and then Halloween was the last show, and then afterwards we wound up having uh, our after party over at the uh, Hard Rock. It was right. Insane. It was it was great. Right. It was insane. upstairs, downstairs. It was very cool. Right. But yeah, that was that was my post. I kind of blew that with my insanity. I got a little crazy. Go back to Soundgarden. Uh, yes. <laughs> I, I mean, this is James Ben, man. James loves Soundgarden. Big Soundgarden guy. I right. always kind of saw Soundgarden more as an Alice in Chains, Screaming Trees type of band, as opposed to uh, Nirvana and Pearl Absolutely. Jam. Absolutely. 
Yeah, I agree. I agree. Allison Chains. It was like I saw Allison Chains at the Garden, and uh, as a matter of fact, I just I just got their new record. Have you heard the Allison Chains new record? Yeah, the new singer's pretty good, right? It's really good, good, right? Really good. It's, it's it sounds amazing. Whoever I saw Allison right? Chains at Maxwell's in Hoboken. Wow, right. Maxwell's, where my kids used to hang out. Okay. Right when, it, right when, right wow. when Facelift first came out. Oh my God, my kid used to he Dinosaur Junior. All that I could put them on the phone. They used to stand there for like hours. Nirvana, they saw uh, everybody there. Everybody there. This is crazy. We're walking down memory lane. It's all over. We're all gonna die anyway. Okay, let's keep <laughs> going. We're gonna be we're gonna be just fine. We you gonna, think so? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I think we're gonna be fine. The I love it. Going down. I'm 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 feeling pretty optimistic these days. You know what? You know what song I always kind of liked. Sean, no. do you remember the song "Face Pollution"? Unbelievable. What was that? It's a that great was, song. Uh, Bad Motorfinger. Yeah, that Motorfinger great... is start to finish an amazing record. It's incredibly heavy. The next record was like the poppier record where, where there was, a, you know, Black Hole Sun became mainstream. But um, Bad Motorfinger is so good. Face Pollution has that crazy time signature. There's horns in it. And out of nowhere, Chris just starts screaming face pollution like he owes God money. And it's amazing. Hey, hey, hey. If that song was ever covered, I would love to hear Sebastian Bach do that song. I can hear him. Sebastian Bach, he's still around. He's still oh, yeah. I can remember driving up and down Broadway in Bayonne and, bl and my 86 Camry blasting Outshined when it first came out. Great song. To the point where I, I literally blew my speakers Rip. out. <laughs> Pull my speakers out in front of Piero's music. Oh yeah! Oh my God, you guys, Bayon guys, I'm telling you. you well, here's what's interesting: when you bring up like his voice, because his voice is hard to do. Um, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, they were up for it again, and uh, whatever, I don't care. I mean, that place. Oh, it, they're getting in. Don't worry about it. But my suggestion is the only way they could play live. I think the only person they should ask would be um, Ann Wilson of Heart, I think would be perfect. They were friends. Yeah, yeah, but she's not a great job. Now, I don't agree with her. Right. Right. She's not the right mentality. You're absolutely right. I'll tell you one thing. There's one person that you may not have heard of, but he's unbelievable. His name is Richie Kotzen. You love know. this guy, Sean. No, I love know. Richie Kotzen because, number one, he was in Poison. Number two, he was in Mr. Right. Big. But he's put out a solo album every year for like 12 years. And the guy literally sounds like Chris Cornell. Wow. He's show. in a band called the Winery Dogs with uh Man. with Billy Don't Sheehan know. and Mike Portnoy from Dream right, Theater. Yeah. I tell her Portnoy. Three songs she could do. She could do Black Hole Sun. She would do an amazing job with Outshine. <laughs> she would crush it, just insane. And the day I tried to live, come on, done. Drop the, I'm dropping the mic for her right now. I mean, James. The quintessential, like like Chris Cornell vocal is "Fell on Black Days." Amazing. That is like I I don't know if anyone can cover that. No. I try. That guy means so much to me. When he died, this is what's crazy. I didn't get any sleep that night, and um, people were checking in on me and like, "Hey man, are you okay?" Yeah. Not from in a while, Reese Waters had moved to DC, hadn't seen him. Hey, buddy, you okay? Now, my grandma, who raised me, died three months before. Didn't hear shit uh -huh. from anyone. And Lisa's dad, <laughs> his actual dad, died like the week before. And he's fucking checking on me. Hey, man, are you okay? Wow. That, but that's how much people knew I loved Soundgarden and Chris Cornell. And it's all I listened to for three weeks. And this girl I was seeing had no idea, because she might yeah. be a little younger than me, and um, was like, what is this old people music? Fucking good music. And, uh, Isn't it funny? Uh, like that's old people music. I don't think so. Not old people. Yeah. I gotta ask you this, James. Did you also love Audio Slave? Yes, I was not as full on that first record's pretty great. That second round, I'm gonna tell you this. Um, like a Stone is amazing. Love it. Love and it. I am the highway. I I listened to the acoustic version of that three weeks straight, basically. I mean, I listened to nothing but Chris and Soundgarden. But I listened to that version probably 150 times. I love that so much. If you play music, I mean, I have a funeral list of songs, but that song has to be played. I love it. It's just too amazing. So, can I ask you a question? Yeah, man. Can I, let me ask you a question. So what's happening? What's the comedy scene like in Vegas now? What are, people, what are you hearing there in terms of, like, is, uh, are you going to be starting to do, like, what's the approach now? 
I think there's a show starting maybe this weekend. And then really? definitely, uh, yeah, phase two, casinos are opening. I was just telling the guys off, Mike, I think there's probably going to be more shows out here than usual because nothing else can open. So we'll see. I might stay out here. You never know. Because I, I go where the work is. I mean, it's. When you say you're out there, where are you in? New, are you in New York or LA right now? So I'm in Vegas right now. So I'm originally from Vegas. Um, I live in Bay Ridge. I still got an apartment there. I hope there's no squatters in there because eventually uh -huh. I, have to um, I came here with like half a week's of clothes and wow. uh, uh, my instruments and some shit there. It'd be nice to get that back, but whatever. But um, yeah, I'm out here because. Uh, because there's so, it, what's such a shame is because I know there's such a ton, like my, my 20 year old goes yeah. to like heavy metal concerts in Vegas. Vegas is like a great venue for music, man. It's right. like they have so many clubs there, you know? The, the joint, which is great. I don't know what they're right. going to do with that casino now. The Hard Rock might be getting it back. Um, Planet Hollywood is as good a venue as you're ever going to find there. Back in the day, <laughs> we used to have this theater, it was a former movie theater. And it was the Huntridge Theater was the greatest place to see concert. It was small. I saw the Chili Peppers when we shot. Oh, uh, God, that's so great. I've seen too many. I saw the boys for two dollars, two goddamn dollars at that show. Two dollars. Two dollars. I was just out there last year and I saw uh, Lady Gaga at the Park MGM. That's what I'm saying. It's like it's so yeah. it's so great when you live in L.A. You just want to go see a show. And you're there like in sec, you know, it's very cool. I don't know about LA or Vegas, but in New York, I, I, I'm really hearing more and more about um, the fall where things are going to start to shoot. I got a, I got a part in a movie. I think hold, 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 you got it. Hold on. My, my little, oh, what'd you make? What'd you get me? Okay. Wow. Thank you, honey. <laughs> I'm doing my interview. It's from the girls. Say the hi. Say hi. hi. Hey. From the girls from the bakery. The girls from the bakery. Happy early birthday. This is my this is my little guy. This is Leo. He's killer. Hey Leo. Watch out. Is he a musician? No, nah, he's an athlete, man. He wouldn't waste his time. He knows where the money is. What he ain't gonna play? waste his time. No, everybody else is. What does he play? What's the sport? He is a monster soccer player. He's yeah. really good at baseball and getting better and better every day. And but everything's on hold right now. He was playing like league soccer. He was traveling. We were traveling all over. Yeah, the... you tell him. I was on an all star team in soccer. He was on the all star team. And tell him. Cool. Going, I think we're going doing the do it, gonna do club soccer. Club oh. soccer, which is like a big deal here. Sure. All right, Leo. Okay. Thank you so much. We're hearing now that uh, Broadway in New York City is going to be reopening in January. Wow. And give me a break. And from what I from what I hear from people is that a lot of the clubs won't go full capacity until then. So oh, let's see. I think I want to go sit in a theater with the highest group that's dying. Like they go from old folks homes to the theater and watch Broadway. Let me go sit in a theater with those people. Well, I can hardly wait. With Broadway, How much do I have to pay? <laughs> Broadway can't they can't operate unless they have full houses. They, it just doesn't make it doesn't make sense, right? right. It doesn't. But, but concert venues, uh, comedy clubs, they're going to be able to open up sooner. We're going to be able to start shooting uh, uh, projects uh, sooner. I, I think we. Are you in a movie? Did you say you're in a movie? Yeah. Did I hear what movie? You? I uh, well, right now I have a couple of them. Uh, I have a movie coming out this year. It was supposed to come out this year called Hungry Saints. I was in The Irishman uh, last year. And I. Fuck, and what'd you do in The Irishman? I probably fell asleep when you were on. Go ahead. Oh, come on, man. He's, he's, on the nine, he's on the nine hour mark. <laughs> well, at, yeah, at the seven hour mark, there's, there's a, <laughs> I'm getting yelled at by Al Pacino because I fucked up. That's right. That's so cool. That's great, man. Yeah. And How is Pacino? Is Pacino fun movie. to work with? I'm sorry? How is Pacino? Was he fun? It was great. Are you kidding me? He was, he was, you know what? He's, he's, a, I think, a Jersey guy. Uh, if you I'm think so? Mistaken. And he, he's also like downtime, nothing but wanting to talk. And, and I had to go to rehearsals with this guy. I mean, he was, he was fantastic. He was out. awesome. Yeah. That's so cool. De Niro was more of a cerebral guy, very, very quiet. Right, right, right. I was also in a movie two years ago called Gone for the Weekend, where my character's name was called Chris Tits. <laughs> 
I think I saw that one. I'm almost positive I did. <laughs> but yeah, Good I Lord. Think we're start to open up and, and loosen up a little bit here. Yeah, we have to, man. I'm we just have worried to. about, you know, especially for comedy, if they're opening up at 25 or even 50% capacity, is the money going to be the same way? It can't be. You, I Look, you know, I hate to be a doomsdayer, man. But first of all, we don't know what the fuck this thing is yet. And it's on the rise everywhere. And if it comes back around to New York, it's, you know, I there are, there are no clear examples of how this is going to work unless people really just don't give a fuck and they don't care if they die and they're just going to walk into clubs no matter what. And I don't think that's going to happen. It's going to take two or three years. It's going to take, it's going to take some kind of, you know, we're going to have to take some kind of shot that we're going to be immune for a while, but it's never going to go fully away. And it, I'm telling you, we are going to live differently from this point on. This is fucked up. What do you guys think? Are we going to live differently? I think it's going to be very different. Now, here's a question for Robert. Um, Let me hear. So they had the first um, concert in Arkansas, okay, that was booked post-COVID. Yeah. 1,200 seat theater. They sold 220 tickets. Exactly. Based out. How do you feel as a performer wanting to do a show like that? not going to happen. First of all, nobody's even talking to me at my house because I am the portrayer of pure doom. Okay. <laughs> Explain to me how people, you know, there's, I, we can't even go down this road because you, you guys are not going to believe where I'm at with this. You know, I just, I, I can't get into this with you because if you're going to show this, people will start sending me hate letters. Okay. And you're gonna print, you're gonna show this somewhere, right? You're gonna have it on your show. So yeah. let's talk about something else. There's no way I'm walking into a theater right now. I wouldn't do that to people. I care about people more than wanting to put them in a position where they could possibly die just to hear no easy way out, you know. So that I could, sense. you know, it's just not right. You know? What about what sense. about the what about these outdoor shows that seem to be kind of like Poss that? well, it was kind of cool. What what's his name did uh, the country artist. Um, you know, he's he showed up at a drive-in theater. Yeah. Uh, I saw that too. It was it Keith yeah. Urban? Keith Urban. Keith Urban did it. He's he's on he's on YouTube like every ten seconds. That yeah. guy, he had a new. He just released a new record, right? Yeah, he did. You know, this is fun. I feel like I'm shooting the shit. Go ahead. Who's turning? Well, that's yeah. how we. That's how we we keep the show. I want to talk about the the last album better than the rest. Now, did you cool. do you write? Uh, when, when you're writing your songs, do you have a lot of collaborations with people or do you come in with the demos yourself? Um, for me, I'm first and foremost a writer, okay? I I write a lot, okay? and uh, But the whole idea of this was that Pablo and I were going to do it, okay? You know who Pablo is? The guy who I did this record with. Right. I, I put out in 207, I did an acoustic record that got me to Spain, England, couple of places and um a guy who was in my band was pablo padilla and pablo came to america did, was in school we kept in touch he said roberto roberto por favor we you know this is but we need we need to do a new record you know and i said okay so and i haven't wanted to do it because i didn't know how i could do it in a way that was like really fresh you know so when we sat down the writing was the easiest part, man. It was like, it was very organic. But you have to realize I've been writing songs since, you know, since, uh, you know, the electric light bulb was invented. And mm -hmm. that's what I do, you know? So can I, writing can, I run, me, can I run by my favorite lyric that I ahead. ever wrote? This is my favorite lyric that I ever wrote. I want to get it from a I professional's point of view. <laughs> I want a professional's point of view. All right, here it goes. Your dirty writings on the wall that you're riding for a fall with no hope to rise. Two faced angel fell from grace and now she's saving face with desperation eyes. That's pretty cool. Yo, I man, like it. He basically told me it sucks. That's okay. I'm totally <laughs> fine with that. I wrote it 20 years ago. It's totally fine. I didn't, I didn't say it sucks, but it's like you, it's like it's a very 80s type of uh, lyric. That's okay. when I wrote it. Right. It's a very 80s type of lyric. I'd have to hear the music to go with it. You know what I mean? Like, what, what are you saying emotionally? You know, it's like, you know, you get, 
it's 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 got great visuals. I mean, it's a fine lyric. You know, is it the best thing I ever heard? How connected are you to it? You know what I mean? Oh, I hated it's like, the song, but it was the best but, lyric I ever wrote. Okay, I don't think it sucks at all. I think it's good. Yeah, there you go. We'll play I'm some demos. On, we'll, we'll play some demos right. on another episode. You play it on the next episode. We're going to have him play the music to that lyric that we're not really sure what it is yet, but we're going to find do that. out next week. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. Good for you. It's, it's good. Like I like Billy it. Blaze from from Night Shift. <laughs> I mean, are we about to cut off? Uh, are we about to, to cut off somebody's head while we're listening to that song? What? What? what is <laughs> Pretty it? much, yeah. Pretty much. I should wind up being on on the next Game of Thrones soundtrack. Yeah. Why not? That would work. Why not? It, that's what it sounds like to me. Hey, what got you guys into music? Me? Yeah, both of you. Both you and James. Okay, I'm I'm living at in the best time. First of all, I have some musicality. You know what I mean? I I can sing, I can hear melody, and I'm young, and I'm like coming home every day and I'm watching million dollar, you know, million dollar movie, and I'm watching uh, uh Yankee Doodle Dandy and I'm listening to music and I love music, and all of a sudden somebody plays me Elvis Presley. And I go, holy shit, what the fuck is this? Right? And then the Beatles, the Stones, and all the... I mean, I grew up in Rome, you know? So I was very inspired, man. Very inspired. Did um, the music... Through music, did you ever hook up with anyone famous? Uh, did I ever hook up to be romantically? Yeah, because you're back in the... Back in the day. Oh, man, you're going to in front of his family, bro. <laughs> what are you setting them up? What are you doing, man? Gotta be doing that shit. Something on him. Let me think. I yeah, I can't talk about that. I guarantee you, she's not listening, Robert. No, she's probably dead. <laughs> you go to store to pick up donuts or something. You go to the bakery. God, it's between us. No, it's the boys Look, in the room. <laughs> you got to remember. You know, we 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 came up. At a very interesting time, man. It's like you guys are young. You guys are young. What are you in your forties? Well, I'm, 40, I'm forty-three. I'm twenty-two. My fifth. Right. That's that's what I'm saying. It's like you're you're Soundgarden, Pearl Jam. I'm fucking uh, the Kinks, the Beatles, the Stones. These people changed my life. You you don't understand. It wasn't just music. It was like, you know. You could say thank you after I say this, but it's like we changed. They changed everything. The way the way it all went, you know. They if really. You could did pick nobody... one band. If you could pick one band, who would it be? <laughs> It'd have to be the Stones. Okay. <laughs> they would Stones and Beatles. You know, one guy wore white. One guy's one guy's hat was black, and and it was like, yeah, that was the template, you know. Awesome. That was the oh, template. Man. I go with the Ruddles. I go Ray off the board. I picked the yeah, Ruddles. But then, That's my man. <laughs> That's because you see everything is funny. <laughs> this wasn't funny. This was serious shit, man. <laughs> what got you into music? Um, man, so my grandparents read me, and I didn't have many friends for most of the night. So I would just lock myself in my room and run around pretending I'm in music videos. And then I got friends, and then I got in fight, fight grade, and I lost them again. And um, the oldest friend I have, I always tell people this, is music. Music has never sold me out. If I'm depressed, if I go out when we used to be able to do that, and I drink and come home alone and my heart's broken, yo, Tori Amos, she's there for me, man. All that shit is always there for me, and um, it's the best. Guess who, sang, guess who sang on my second record? Tori Amos. Tori? That's right. Even in your comedy, James, you incorporate a lot of uh, pop culture references, but especially a lot of music references. Absolutely. I, I think part of my influence, man, when people ask me, I don't like um, just being influenced by what you're doing. So like Richard Pryor is my one, but like the wrestler Dusty Rhodes is two. The Beastie Boys are like my third influence. The Sopranos and their pop culture references. Like the Beastie Boys did nothing but pop culture references. Those records, you go back and try and learn the things they talked about. So that always... That was like in my DNA. So there's like, no did you, surprise did only you see, one size. Did you see the documentary, the BC Boy documentary on Netflix? Or that, I was there. I was at the filming of it. It was you wild. Were. Yeah, man. It, it was, it was cool, crazy. right? Yeah, it was enjoyable. 
Um, I kind of wish, though, after seeing it live and seeing it filmed, I kind of would like just a full documentary without them on stage doing lines. Yeah. I, yeah. They, they had one on MTV back in the day called Bestiography. You can still find it on YouTube, and it's great, but it just stops right at Hello Nasty. But there's you if you did it in that vein, but with everything else, it'd be the greatest thing ever. I mean, they're they're on my short list with with Soundgarden. They they're like religion to me. They're like one of my favorite. They meant so much to me. Did you ever get a chance to see him? Yo, so I'm at the Huntridge for Two Bones in uh, Vegas. <laughs> Lollapalooza at '94 opening day. I was yeah. at that one. This lineup, people sleep on it. <clears throat> Barely anyone was there in Vegas. It was hotter than a pepper sprout. It was. So from the headliner up, it went, the last band was Pumpkins. It was Pumpkins, Beasties, George Clinton, um, with the, with the L7, the Tribe Called Quest, Nick Cave in the fucking Bad Seas. I love Nick Cave. Stage. Yeah, on the second stage. The second stage was The Verb and The Flaming Lips. I love The Flaming it. Lips. Great band. I out of Randall's Island. Randall, yeah, great venue. Yeah. yeah. And I saw the Beastie Boys right before the release of the first album. They played the Ritz. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Which became Webster Hall, right? Yeah. Uh, yes, yes. It became, it became Webster Hall. It, do, do we lose somebody? Is everything okay? I'm here. I'm here. I'm, here. I'm, here. I'm drinking coffee. I'm drinking my drinking coffee. coffee. Yeah, yeah. Well, coffee does that to yeah, you. Coffee, coffee, yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> this, this, this show. This is a good one. I'm dropping my papers. Uh, this is a good one. <laughs> I'm here. Very I'm here. Jay, well, what did you do uh, warm up for? You said you did warm up. Oh uh, man, I done a few. Um, I did like the break with Michelle Wolf. Crowd goes wild. I did. Oh Hasama. man, I love I Michelle did, Wolf. Did great. I did all. I was Michelle man. Wolf. I did uh, bring the funny. Awesome cat. She's the best, man. She used to. We worked together in Vegas and didn't know till years later. She used to work. I at love her. Before. When I worked at Margaritaville, I had no is idea. She, can I ask you, is she hot? I mean, she's my friend, man. I ain't gonna say like, uh, she's, she's a very wonderful, attractive person who, uh, you know, I mean, she's beautiful, great person. Yeah. I mean, I mean come I on, man. My homie. I ain't gonna be like, yo, dog. Yo, <laughs> old friend. My old boss. She's too, cute. Man. She's cute, man. She is really cute with that no, little man. French no. poodle hair. <laughs> <laughs> We I go quarantine sometimes, and this is one of those times. Sometimes I get real depressed, you know, like 23 hours of the day. But right now, <laughs> I'm like, keep everything closed. Fuck Broadway. Fuck a career. I'll find money somewhere else. Who cares? This is what- We'll be going. selling our blood in a year. Are you kidding? Baby, I'm going to sell it tonight. Next year, next year at this time. We all agree to do this show again. I'm telling you, we're going to all be in such a better place. Believe me. Well, that ain't hard. We're in the fucking toilet right now. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I, you listen to our leaders. We're on the way out. We're on the way out. Everything. You're fucking, you're delusional. Are you kidding me? It's on the rise in 27 states right now. Phil, go, 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 go take a steam bath with like 800 people next oh, to you. That's right. what it's like. I keep forgetting you live in LA, LA County, right? Where I do. Yeah, you guys are going to be on lockdown forever. It doesn't make a difference. Well, that's right. Yeah, we're going to drive. We're going to drive our little solar cars right to Starbucks and home. That's it. <laughs> what, is, what do the people think about that mayor out there? Uh, is there kind of a back? We are very lucky, man. We got a great right. governor. We got a great mayor. We do. We really do. They did. They did a good. They did a good job of being rational, okay? Just being human. It's hard these days. It's hard. Yeah. I mean, you see stuff going on here today. There was a, a bunch of different protests about opening up the city, about loosening restrictions, about trying to get restrictions, uh, you know, to start to get into phase one a little faster here. We're, we're not even in phase one in uh, New York City yet. And you know what? You know, I got a T-shirt. I, I want to do... I want to do... Uh, uh, COVID t-shirts, you know, like your liberty is killing me. You know, shit like that. What do you think? Any good? Hmm. Yeah, I'd buy one. <laughs> yeah, they're they already they already announced there's a thousand salon owners in New Jersey that are breaking the lockdown and they're gonna open no matter what. Woo! Woo! A Yo, thousand. That's what Ben Franklin thought about, man. 1776, dog. <laughs> Salons. James, Ben Franklin was not a fan of democracy. No, he wasn't. He liked hookers. 
Big fan of hookers. Thank you, my friend. Yeah. Thank you. No, he really, he really didn't have any regard for the common people. He didn't think that they'd be smart enough to make uh, good decisions. Him and Alexander Hamilton both thought the same way. And so did Plato and Socrates. Well, they might not be wrong, everybody. I don't know. <laughs> Yo, do you ever watch like Revenge of the Sith and then listen to that end speech and go, boy, Anakin's really on to something. Never, I don't watch Star Wars. <laughs> it's great. I don't watch Star Wars. How dare wow. you? Wow. Oh, back. Here he is. I'm here. I'm here. Right, you went black for a second there. So promise me one thing, Robert. When I come out to L.A. next year, we go to the Saddle Ranch on Sunset, and we have burgers and cotton candy together. That sounds good. I don't eat cotton candy, but I'll eat a good burger any day of the week. Yo, I'll, I'll go out there, and we'll go to Musso and Frank's, like real Oh, now nah, there you go. There you go. What pussyfoot boys? 21st I'm tell- century. Listen, I'm telling you right now. Side- we go there and have a side of beef. I'm go. born and raised in New Jersey my entire life. I've eaten pizza in New Jersey my entire life. I've eaten pizza in New York City my entire life. And there's no better pizza in the world than at the Rainbow on Great Sunset Rainbow's Strip. Pretty good. The, the Rainbow's, Rainbow's pretty pizza good. It's the best pizza I've ever had in my life. So when you're yeah, in LA, absolutely. which this is food's the good here. first, in and out Burger or Pink's? Who, me? For me? Either one. It's open for everybody. In and out Yeah, you got to go in and out because, I mean, Pink's you can get in Vegas now. Closed in Vegas. Closed. Oh, they closed it. Close. They close. They close the pinks. Yeah, at the Planet Hollywood. See, uh, I have my certain spots that I go to in LA all the time. So I always go to the Rainbow. I go to the Saddle Ranch. There's a great bar called the Roger Room that I love. The Roger Room. Uh, you gotta look it up. It's like an old school '50s style speakeasy where, like, oh. the, where like the uh, the bartenders are actually mixologists and they make you really fancy drinks with the big circular ice cubes. Really wow. fancy place, and. Uh, you know, then I slum it a little bit. Yo, what about <laughs> the Burgundy Room? The Burgundy Room is the great I mean, ashes poured Burgundy Room. Friday night there, just playing nothing but old, like sweet Mata Hoople, all this good ass shit. They played the faces. Stay with me. I almost got three wives. I was just screaming. Oh, it was the greatest place in the world. That's awesome. Rod had some balls, yeah. baby. LA's great. I love it. My favorite place in the world. Well, you know what? It's just, it's, it's like, you know, we're a bunch of latte loving fucking electric car driving idiots. But on the, on, on the, on the, on the bigger picture, there is somewhat of an awareness of what's going on and, and a semblance of sanity. Unlike certain places, you know, New York's doing good. My kid's going back there like in a week, going back to the city. God bless him. He ain't gonna be going to he ain't gonna be doing much. I'll tell you that. No. Yeah, yeah. there might be an empty apartment he can he can uh, stay in. In Bay Ridge. <laughs> probably like six in other Bay, people. In Bay Ridge. Right you're you're yeah. looking for a sublet. With faulty plumbing. <laughs> Hopefully they fix that shit. My goodness. Yeah, they'll get it under control for you. <laughs> All right, guys. So when's this going to be on? What, what, it'll what be live. To, it'll be up tomorrow, and uh, I'll I'll send it to you on Facebook, so that way you can post it yourself too. So how do you know that, what's his name, Mike? Is it Mike? Yes, Mike Massiello. So tell me about mine. Mike. He seems like a cool guy. He's a great dude. Um, he's a fan of my comedy. He became a friend of mine. And he was like, listen, I would love to help you uh, get some people on the show. And I'm like, all right, give me some give me some names. He goes, do you want to have Robert Tepper? And I go, Ooh. fuck yeah, I want Robert <laughs> Tepper on a goddamn show. Because I talk about, I do a live feed every night. And Rocky IV <laughs> seems to come up every single night on the live feed. So oh, when that's he said so that to cool. me, I thank was like, you, look, man. we got to get him on. So a big thank you to Mike Massiello. Yeah, take, uh, say hi say hi to Mike when you see him, man. Absolutely. You know, it seems like a good Italian family. The food, you showed me the table of food, took a yeah. picture. My God, you could, one dinner you could eat for a month. Uh, that's how we do it. That's how we do it <laughs> as Italians. All right, gentlemen, thank you so much for having thank me. Thank you, guys. Robert, thank thank you. you for sharing oh, the stage you, with, with, with my brother from... Uh, from another mother in Vegas. I what appreciate up, baby? It. A pleasure, sir. Absolute pleasure. And let's uh, all stay healthy you. and happy. And do me a favor, man. Just don't go to any bars and eat French fries. You know, don't do that. <laughs> like right next to somebody. Don't breathe on anybody. No, you know? we're good. We're good. <laughs> well, this is a great episode of Who's Your Band. Uh, thank you, Robert. Thank you, James, for coming on. And uh, we will see you all next week. All right, guys. Thank you, man. Adios.